face of the public. You represent the values and belief. I know that you are well aware of the importance of your duties and responsibilities and will continue to use your knowledge and experience to enhance the overall operation of New Haven Public Schools. School boards are an inherent part of our democracy and are entrusted with the critical responsibility of making numerous and at times difficult decisions that will affect students, parents, and the community at large. I'm well aware of your passion for education and your commitment to advocate for educational equity for all of New Haven students. In this regard, school board members must strive to work collaboratively and to reach consensus on difficult issues. It is with that understanding that I ask that you raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Darnell Golston. I, Darnell Golston. Solemnly swear, solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially I will faithfully and impartially perform the duties of the office of board member perform the duties of the office of board member of the New Haven Board of Education of the New Haven Board of Education to the best of my ability to the best of my ability and according to law and according to law and that I will at all times and I will at all times strive to use the power entrusted to me strive to use the powers entrusted in me as such officer as such officer for the best interest of the city for the best interest of the city so help me god so help me god congratulations my son thank you and congratulations honorable goldson at this time, we will hear vocal selections from the Varick AME Choir. Speak. <laughs> are our students extraordinary? Are they extraordinary? Thank you, Fairhaven Choir. I'm going to speak first and then you're going to sing? <laughs> well, you can, you can sing while I'm speaking. <laughs> I'll just be a minute. <laughs> I want to thank God for his blessings, allowing us to get out of bed this morning. I want to congratulate um, Justin Elliker, Mike Smart, and the Board of Alders. Um, for the, the um, for being sworn in today. I want to give thanks to my family and friends who have supported me throughout the many years without whose support I would not be standing here today. I want to especially thank my son, Tommy Carter, his son, my grandson, Jalen, um, his, his girlfriend, um, Ariel, my sister, Clarissa, uh, my brother-in-law, Otis, uh, my and of course, my daughter, Akilah, and my lovely wife, the rock of my life. Jalen, stand up for a second. Jalen. <laughs> he had a lot of energy. Keeps me busy. Um, please give Barbara Segaloff and her team a round of applause for putting this inauguration together. Did a terrific job dealing with a lot of different moving parts and a lot of different personalities. Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> and I want to give a shout out to um, Representative Tony Walker, who has been extremely, extraordinarily helpful um, at the state level uh, with some of the stuff that we've accomplished this year. And though he was a cross graduate, we'll forgive him for that, I want to thank Principal Glenn Worthy for hosting us today in this beautiful facility. 
I got to give a special thanks to um, Judge Whoopi Harper, who unfortunately is also a Cross graduate, but that's okay. We'll forgive him for that too. Um, it, it's an honor to have a Supreme Court justice and a trailblazing mentor, E, and, and to have his invaluable counsel. Although his walls are filled with awards, he recently received the New Haven County Bar Association's Lifetime Achievement Award for his extraordinary commitment to justice and equality. His commitment to education is unwavering, and students will be inspired by his example and motivated to change the world, whether it be a cross student using the library media center named in his honor, those New Haven graduates attending the University of New Haven who received the endowed scholarship fund named after him, or a board member being sworn in today. Thank you, Judge Hart. Judge Harper's commitment to something larger than oneself is but one influ influence that leads me to standing on this stage today. As a proud graduate of Hill House and a former president of the student council here, I last walked these halls 40 years ago. I left to explore the world, but was eventually pulled back by a connection to this community my community, and a yearning to belong to something larger than myself. Those connections were forged generations ago when my ancestors escaped the bonds of slavery and resettled in Estonia and Derby, and then eventually New Haven after the Great Flood. All these people on this stage, in one way or another, have some connections to our community and are motivated by the desire to be part of something larger than themselves, to give back to the community from which they sprung. It is the desire to give back and be part of something larger than myself which motivated me to serve on the Board of, of Education. It is the connections to terrific and caring members on that board like Dr. Tamiko Jackson MacArthur, Yesenia Rivera, Larry Conaway, Matt Wilcox, Dr. Ed Joyner, and students Nico Rivera and Liham Arunda, which motivated me to serve another term. I look forward soon to being joined by Mayor Justin Elliker, who I served with on the Board of Aldermen several, several years ago. I am encouraged for a better future for our school system by a Board of Alders filled with childhood friends like Jeanette Morrison, Honda Smith, and Kim Edwards, as well as new friends like President Taisha Walker Myers, I'm her best friend now, she doesn't know it yet, but I'm definitely her best friend. Richard Furlow, Frank Douglas, Anna Festa, Joni Ortez, Jill Marks, Brian Wilcock, and of course, Sal, of course, Sal DeCola, who comes to every board meeting. It is what drives me to hope for a better future for our school system. As a board member, it is our constitutional obligation as members of the board to, quote, maintain good public elementary and secondary schools. It should be our moral obligation to provide the highest quality educational experience for our students. That is the goal I have set for myself. How do we become an elite system? When it comes to education, we don't need to reinvent the will. What we should be doing is copying the best. Our teachers are just as good as, if not better, than anybody else in this state. Our administrators work hard and care about this system. Our board members fight hard for what they believe is best for the system, and so far none of them have ended up in jail. So what is the difference between us and them? I researched what I consider to be many of the best school systems what are considered many of the best schools in Connecticut. Darien, Weston, and New Canaan. Those schools are always listed in the top five of the best schools systems in Connecticut. 
And I found that there was a major difference between those schools and our school system. And that difference is money. Here are the numbers. 56%, that's the amount of property in New Haven that is non-taxable by constitutional and statutory restraints. That's the loss of, a, of over $100 million in revenue to our communities and to our school system. $22,000, that's the average cost of, of, of per student for Darien, Weston, and New Canaan. 15000 the average cost for New Haven students, a $7,000 difference. What did, the, school, what did the, the, the city spend on their school system? Percentage of education spending to their total town budget. Darien spends 68% of their budget on their school system. Weston spends 79%. New Canaan spends 60%. New Haven spends 34%. And if you subtract state money, that's 6% of our money that we put into our school system. Transportation costs. The, those three towns spend less than 4% on their transportation costs. We spend 13.5%, $25 million on transporting kids, mostly because of a 20-year-old desegregation plan that was put in place, experiment, that magnet school experiment that's not working for us right now, that we're paying dearly for. A substantial part of the funding gap can be laid on the shoulders of the state disallowing the city to fully tax all properties at the same time severely underfunding education. The state must do better for our students. Do And when I'm saying this, I want you to remember, I want you to look over at these students when I'm saying this, because this is who we're talking about. New Haven has also fallen short of its responsibility. We just haven't made education a priority. Darien, Western, New Canaan annually incre increased their school budgets to keep up with the cost of living increases. In the last three years, their schools boost, boosted, boosted their salaries, boosted their budgets by 4.5 to 7 percent. The same time in New Haven, over that three years, 0.53 percent, one half of one percent we gave to our school system in increases, while our annual costs rise two to four percent every year. New Haven must do better. Now, there will be some who yell from the mountaintop that money won't solve the problems or improve educational outcomes. I would yell back that if that were the case, why do these three towns and others devote so much spending to their, to their education? Because it makes a difference. Funding does make a difference. It determines whether there are 15 children in a classroom or 25. It determines whether students will have, 25, will have computers or 25-year-old textbooks. It determines how many AP classes will be offered. Money does make a difference. It is not the New Haven community's burden that our schools are underfunded. The fault lies with the state government who are okay with funding prisons, the prison industrial complex at $56,000 per prisoner while funding schools, students at $11,000. That's where the fault lies. The fault lies with the state government which sets desegregation goals and then underfunds those goals laying the burden on the very cities who can at least, who can at least afford it. The fault lies with us, our city government, our taxpayers, who blame our score, schools for the shortfalls in, shortfalls in annual funding, spending when they refuse to allow good financial governance to rule the day and fund annual budgets at a realistic level, like other cities do. I, as a board member, will no longer let the fault for deficits and lower testing scores be, to be laid at the feet of our students and our teachers. I will no longer participate in discussions regarding cutting our student services because someone else has decided that students should be funded less than prisoners. We as a board, as a school system, 
and as concerned citizens must redefine the issues and transform the debate. New Haven doesn't suffer from a spending deficit, it suffers from a funding deficit. New Haven students don't suffer from an achievement gap, they suffer from an opportunity gap. Right. New Haven's a good city. Grew up here all my life, came back here. We are all in this together. We are bound by our connections, which makes our city a diverse and vibrant mecca to raise a family. We should be aiming for greatness. Education is the last great hurdle to achieving that greatness. Thank you all for giving me this time and opportunity to serve something greater than myself. Thank you again, Honorable Goldson. At this time, we will hear vocal selections from the Varick AME Choir.
you to the Varick AME Choir. I invite to the podium the Honorable Judge Robin L. Wilson, Superior Court, State of Connecticut, who will administer the oath to the Board of Alders. We ask all 30 members to please stand. Good afternoon and Happy New Year. I love this great city where I was born and raised. I am so proud to be here today. I'm so proud of the city of New Haven. Great people, all of you, great community, and a place for great opportunity. To my dear friend, Mayor Harp, a job well done. Congratulations to another dear friend, our new mayor, Justin Elliker. <laughs> Mayor-elect Elliker, on a personal note, I want you to know that Mommy, Miss Clara, and Betty, who are here today, June and Rebecca, who are looking down from above on you with a proud smile. And all of your friends of the Cedar Hill and East Rock neighborhood are so very proud of you. And we're counting on you to continue the good work that you did for us in the East Rock and Cedar Hill Avenue, Cedar Hill Avenue area to make this city the great city that it is and to continue to make the city the great city that it is. Congratulations to the re-elected and new elected alders of this great city who I'm honored to swear in today. <laughs> and to the people of this community, make no mistake, this is a new year, a new beginning, and things are going to change. Change can sometimes be hard, very hard, but understand that we all must change in order to grow. So let's continue to grow together and work together to continue to make New Haven the place that we all love. With that, it is now my honor and privilege to swear in the newly elected and re-elected alders, and I ask that you please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I solemnly swear, I solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially, impartially perform the duties of the office of alder to the best of my ability and according to law and that, and that I will at all times strive to use the power entrusted to me as such officer for the best interest of the city. So help me God. Congratulations to you all. Congratulations to the Board of Alders. At this time, I invite U.S. Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro to the podium. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, whoever did put the program together, Thank you for allowing me to go after the swearing in of the New Haven Board of Alders. I have a long history with the New Haven Board of Alders. I love you deeply, and so much of my life has been tied up with the good work that you do on behalf of the citizens of this great city. So thank you so, so very, very much. 
Um, I also want to give a shout out to Barbara Segaloff. My God, but she knows how to put things together. She led the committee. Um, you know, it's not alchemy that makes this happen. It's hard, it's hard work. Uh, and a special thank you to the entire team uh, who put this event together today. And you know what was insisted, and I, I have to believe that that comes from the top and that comes from the mayor elect, that insisting on a transparent process and inviting every citizen of this great city to join and to get involved in the effort. Let me recognize, yes, it is really, it is a transparent, open, beautiful, democratic process. Let me recognize our Lieutenant Governor Susan Bysiewicz, yeah. Senator Richard Blumenthal, who you've heard from. Where is Martin Looney, our President of Pro Tem of the Senate? We have also state legislators who are here today, and thank you so, so very much. You know, these are elected officials and appointed officials who understand why they are elected to these jobs and what their role is, and it is to provide opportunity for people in our community, in our city. And you know, when you have so many different parts of government coming together, this is local, state, and federal level coming together because we need to work together to push down the barriers. And please, you should know that we are there for you and that we have your back in the same way you have had our back. Let me also extend the warmest of wishes to someone who is a dear friend who served with my mom on the board and who served us in the state legislature and who served as mayor of this city, and that's Tony Hart. It is a new year in New Haven. 2019 was quite the year for our city. It was a year of change, brought about by hard work and collaboration and a love for the city of New Haven. And now, a genuine unity to address so many of our challenges. We will band together in 2020 to make sure that housing is more affordable, that is, there's less food insecurity in our community, less poverty, and leverage of all our resources so that we can rise together. New Haven is my home. I love this city. I referenced my family and the board. My mother and father served proudly on the Board of Alders. They ministered to their community. They worked every day to make opportunity real for people. And my mom, who passed away just two years ago, was the longest serving alder in our city's history, with 35 proud years on the board. I offer my congratulations to everyone being inaugurated today. Our city clerk, Michael B. Smart, with a similar commitment to our community. To the new member of the Board of Education, Darnell Goldson. And I must tell you, Darnell, I gotta tell you, my three kids went to Wilbur Cross, so there you go. Anyway, to the 30 members of the Board of Alders, some new and some who have been doing this job for years, all taking their oaths of office today. We say thank you for your dedication and your service to our great city. I want to say a special thank you to Mayor-elect Justin Elliker for inviting me to speak to all of you on this very important day. Mayor Elliker, I'm excited to see all that you will accomplish. <laughs> Justin and his wife Natalie moved to New Haven over a decade ago and fell in love with our city. From serving on the Board of Alders to running a nonprofit organization, he has worked every day since then to serve New Haven and its residents. 
and they are raising two beautiful daughters, April and Molly, who are in our public school system today. Justin will be a special leader, not just focused on what is broken and needs fixing, but always thinking about how we can be better as a city and united as a community. He wants to help new businesses invest in New Haven. He wants to expand educational opportunity for all of our children, expand summer youth program for our kids, provide more jobs for our community, and strengthen the vitality of all of our neighborhoods. I know that Justin and the rest of those being inaugurated today will be great leaders, making sure that we strive for a rising prosperity in every single corner of our city. We are in a new era of vibrant collaboration, of shared dreams, and a united impetus for change. Let us welcome this new year and our new mayor with vigor and excitement for all that we can accomplish as a city together. I wish you all of the best in all of your roles. I thank you again for what you do and what you will continue to do for our beloved New Haven with such a proud history. And a new chapter of that history begins today. God bless you and thank you for including me today. Thank you, Congresswoman Deloro. I invite Lieutenant Susan Weisswick to the podium. Good afternoon. On behalf of Governor Lamont and myself, I am so honored to be here with you today to celebrate a new year, a new decade, and a new beginning for the city of New Haven. Um, I am keenly aware and mindful that I am the only thing right now standing between all of us and the swearing in of the new mayor, uh, but I, I hope you will allow me uh, to say a few words of thanks. First, I'd like to ask you to join me in thanking Mayor Tony Harp for being a trailblazer and a tireless advocate and role model for New Haven. We will remember her stewardship and great service to this city and our state. You know, our senator, uh, Senator Blumenthal, has mentioned some very important groups that have made this day possible. Our veterans, our first responders, our educators. We should recognize another very special and important group of people who are the reason that this very distinguished group of public servants are seated on this stage. And I am speaking about the families and the spouses of our elected officials. I'd ask them, all of our family members of elected officials, to please stand so we can recognize and say thank you to you for your service, your sacrifice, your support your generosity. And I want to say to all those family members and spouses and to Natalie, uh, my husband runs a support group and a counseling <laughs> service for uh, elected officials, so feel free to call on him. I want to also offer my sincere congratulations to City Town Clerk uh, Michael Smart, to Board of Education member Darnell Goldson, and to the men and women sworn in today to the Board of Alders. Today is a special day, and New Haven is a very special place. 
According to national studies, New Haven County is the county that is most representative of the United States. Think about that and think about why that is. It's because of the diversity that we have in New Haven. That is why New Haven is the heart of New Haven County and our state. And what makes New Haven very special is its people and its shared values, and they are values that Governor Lamont and I share. What are those values? They are the $15 an hour minimum wage and the paid family medical leave that we've just passed. Thank you, legislators and Representative Porter. Uh, they are the values of good schools, of second chances, of ensuring equality and opportunity for everyone, no matter where you came from, what God you worship or who you love. So to Mayor-elect Elliker, we want you to know that Governor Lamont and I wish you every success. Please know that we are your partners. We are looking forward to collaborating with you and your legislators because, Mayor-elect, your success is New Haven's success and Connecticut's success depends on the success of the Elm City. So as I like to say when I close uh, the Senate session to my friend, Senate President Martin Luthi, go forth and govern. God bless New Haven, our beautiful state, and our great country. Thank you for having me today. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Bicewitz. At this time, I invite the Honorable Victor A. Bolden, U.S. District Court for the District of Connecticut, to the podium, who will administer the oath of office for Mayor-elect Dustin Elliker. I invite Mayor-elect Elliker, Mrs. Natalie Elliker, daughters Molly and April, and Mr. and Mrs. Gordon Elliker to the podium. Mayor-elect Elliker, would you repeat after me? I, Justin Elliker, solemnly swear. I, Justin Elliker, solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially that I will faithfully and impartially perform the duties perform the duties of the office of the mayor of the city of New Haven of the office of the mayor of the city of New Haven to the best of my ability and according to law to the best of my ability and according to law and that I will at all times and that I will at all times strive to use the power entrusted to me strive to use the power entrusted to me as such officer as such officer for the best interest for the best interest of the city of New Haven of the city of New Haven so help me God so help me God congratulations Mr. Mayor <laughs>
Hi. Good afternoon. Um, a lot of talk about uh, change in 20, 2020, uh, and there's definitely some change today, and, and not to get too political, but I'm hope, hopeful there might be some change at the end of the year, too. Um, Uh, th thank you, uh, thank you, Natalie and Sebastian, uh, our MCs from New Haven Academy. You know, a lot of people talk about a lot of people talk about how the youth are our future, but these two are our today. And by the way, they're also the co-founders of uh, New Haven High School Democrats, and I hear they're looking for some new members. Uh, thank you to the Fair Haven K8 singers, Vera Choir, Teddy Brown, Jordan Watson. You're right; they are stealing the show. Uh, so inspired by your music, so thank you so much. Thank you uh, for the inspiration from our clergy uh, for agreeing to be here and uh, to uh, help us take a moment to think deeper about uh, our city and the work that we have ahead of us. Uh, thank you to the distinguished oath administrators for making this day memorable as well. Thank you for the incredible city departments too. Uh, you have no idea. The only person that has any idea is Barbara Segalov. Uh, you have no idea how much effort it takes to put this event together. Uh, and in particular, the New Haven Fire Department, Police Department, Health Department, uh, Traffic, Transportation, and Parking Departments, New Haven Public Schools. Uh, thank you. Thanks to Glenn Worthy, uh, the principal of James Hill House High School, for uh, welcoming and hosting us here today, and to the Hill House Junior uh, ROTC uh, for, uh, for starting us off. So I, I appreciate all of the effort uh, that's gone into this, and I, want, and I ask you to join me in a round of applause for the inauguration committee, in particular Bar Barbara Salov. It is not easy to organize this event. Thank you. <laughs> Senator Blumenthal, uh, Congresswoman DeLauro, Lieutenant Governor Bicewitz, President Walker Myers, honorable members of the Board of Alders, uh, City Town Clerk Smart, uh, President Darnell Goldson, uh, Dr. Joyner, I presume you're here somewhere as well, honorable members of the Board of Education, uh, Dr. Tracy, the two chiefs, uh, mom, dad, uh, my in-laws, Angie and Dave, my cousin Christy, who came from California, uh, Natalie, Molly, and April, and everyone else here, I forget anyone, uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you so much for being here. If you're here, it's because you care about New Haven. We know, of course, that there are countless others like that who are not here today, who also love this city. And I know, as I take a few minutes of our shared time today to talk about New Haven, where it's been, where it's going, and what it needs, that I'll be preaching to the choir. You know we're in this together, or you wouldn't be here. You know this city, as I know this city, and you care about this city, as I do, or you wouldn't be here. So if, if you learned something today, if you're inspired by anything today, please take that back to your community and spread the word. I'll be taking a few minutes to describe our New Haven, which is as much yours as it is mine, as it is to the people who have grown up here and flown out into the wide world, and to those who are yet to come. Let's reflect on that for a moment and parse it out. Consistent with worldwide trends, the people who call New Haven home have always been in flux since European settlers took this land from the Quinnipiac tribe. With the changes in people come changes in the use and industry of the city. The Quinnipiac worked and thrived on the land. Early European settlers brought international commerce, including vast shipping industry that used our harbor. The Industrial Revolution beaconed rural Americans to our city center. New waves of European immigrants generated churches, pizza, the hamburger, and a charity hospital. Black migration from the South, looking for work and for a new life, built neighborhoods and culture. And in more recent years, Latinx newcomers also built neighborhoods and enriched our art and our culture and community. And today, our Middle Eastern and Arab communities are finding their place in the fabric of this city. Like these newcomers, I was also one time a newcomer to New Haven, as was my wife, Natalie. Does being a newcomer mean that you don't belong, that you can't love a place and its people? Of course not. Natalie and I hope that our children, who were born here, also feel that they belong and love this place and its people. We're a city that celebrates the new and the old. 
the visitors and the homegrown. But, this his, but with history as a guide, we should anticipate and expect that as global forces shift who lives here, there will always be changes in how we live, work, and govern. And change can be hard, but we're in it together. Tony Harp was also a newcomer to our city at one time. And then she dedicated over 30 years of public service to our city. And for that, she must be applauded. For the last six years, she served as our mayor, and being mayor is not an easy job. Although for the last four minutes, it hasn't been too bad for me. Um, <laughs> but, but I'm sure there's many challenges uh, that, are, that are coming ahead. Uh, despite the job that the job presented her with many challenges, Mayor Harp took on the job with passion and dedication. She worked hard to invest in young people through USTAT and by ensuring the recreation of the Q House. She dedicated time and resources to communities in New Haven who felt they hadn't been listened to in decades. Mayor Harp cared about those who felt they didn't have a voice, and I admire her for that. I'd ask you to join me now in giving a round of applause for Mayor Harp and the impact she's had on New Haven. And now, as we enter this new decade, New Haven is again experiencing great change. We're growing rapidly at a pace not seen since the 1920s. 84% of the U.S. population lives in ur urban areas today. By 2050, an estimated 89% of the U.S. population is projected to live in urban areas. And as we've seen, New Haven is experiencing this phenomenon too. Since 2014, the city has added more than 1,000 new rental units, with more than 4,000 more under construction or in planning stages. The city's most recent estimates are that our population has grown from about 130,000 residents just a few years ago to 133,000 today. Incidentally, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, uh, because I see the Lieutenant Governor here, that the census is coming up. And uh, just like she is doing hard work to make sure every resident in this state is counted, we will make sure every resident in New Haven is counted. <laughs> this growth presents an incredible opportunity for New Haven. To try to stem this tide or insulate our city from this trend would be impossible and irresponsible. For the survival and the success of our city, we must lean into this wave and create an environment in New Haven that encourages growth. But we must not be passive observers of this change. We've got to ensure that the growth benefits every single person in this community. As we harness this tremendous energy, new investment, rapid growth, and increasing momentum, we must ensure it carries everyone higher. We will grow by welcoming outside resources and people, and we will grow from within. Inclusive growth, equitable growth, so that every New Haven resident has the opportunity to thrive. One, housing. We must ensure that New Haven residents have more options for safe, clean, and healthy, affordable housing units. Nearly one-third of New Haven residents spend over 50% of their income on housing. Now is the time to prioritize the creation of affordable housing. And as so many of you know, what we often call affordable isn't affordable to everyone. We must have new, deeply affordable housing units. My administration will prioritize holding bad landlords accountable and ensure residential growth occurs in ways that provide quality, affordable housing options that are more accessible to all residents. <laughs> Two, jobs. Jobs. We must ensure access to jobs for New Haven residents. 30% of New Haven residents are underemployed, 30%. And the potential here for growth is huge particularly in the medical, bioscience, digital tech, tech uh, digital health, technolog technology, advanced manufacturing, and construction sectors. We have an $800 million neuroscience center that is coming online over the coming years. And our medical science and biotech industry, with the right nurturing, are poised to explode. And as we all know, any job isn't what's truly going to make a difference in someone's life. 
it's a career that's important. People don't need two or three part-time jobs. What people need is one good job. My administration will prioritize job training and career ladders to ensure New Haven residents benefit from our growing industry. Three, education. We must ensure our public schools serve the needs of every child, and not just the academic needs, but the whole child. And parents, parents, please opt into our public schools. Most residents in New Haven don't have a choice between public and private. Every parent wants the best for their child. Together, we can make our public schools the best for every child. My administration, in partnership with Dr. Tracy and the Board of Education, will prioritize those areas with demonstration for success in improving the lives of children. Early childhood education, age-appropriate learning, including play-based learning, quality after-school and summer programs, programs that prepare kids for success in college, and programs that ensure those kids who may not go to college have training and access to a good job after graduation. And for safety, we must do all this while ensuring the basic jobs of government gets done. Safe neighborhoods, safe from violence, safe from petty crime, safe from dangerous drivers, reliable municipal services, from potholes to plowing. I like the one round of applause for that. Someone, someone needs a pothole fixed. These goals, these goals are not easy to accomplish. We're in a budget crisis and must correct course. Our state is experiencing similar pressures. Thousands of residents in our city are facing challenges of extreme poverty and the trauma associated with it. And each of these priorities will take many years for us to accomplish. So how do we get there? First, it's critical that our government be open and inclusive. Data Haven's most recent community report stated that only 34% of New Haven residents believe that government is responsive to their concerns and needs. I mean, think about that. Nearly two-thirds of all New Haveners think their government isn't responsive. Our government must be open and inclusive in the way we conduct our business. I believe our transition team has set the right tone with the level of public inclusion in our work to compile the transition report. I was excited when our transition team felt up to the task of holding so many public meetings, and we were th all thrilled when hundreds of city residents attended our first and second public transition meetings. Talk is cheap. But showing up to two public meetings to engage with neighbors set a tone and a course for our city, and that's an investment. I thank all of those who have contributed to the transition process. There's hundreds of you. Can I give, we all give them a round of applause. So we need to ensure our government is open and inclusive. The second way we get there is by holding fast to our values, especially at this time in our nation's history, when those values are under attack. We are a city that rejects hate. Today, we see a level of brazen nationalism, anti-Semitism, racism, and divisive rhetoric and actions around the nation. New Haven rejects all forms of hate, period. We will not compromise on this point, and we will call it out when we see it. We are a city that serves as a sanctuary for everyone regardless of race, ethnicity, religion, economic status, sexual orientation, and immigration status. And under my administration, I will continue, we will continue to value every person and continue as such a sanctuary. We are a city that cares about our environment. We're in the midst of a climate emergency. And with the lack of leadership in Washington on the greatest challenge facing our Earth in human history, our city must lead the way in valuing the Earth and taking responsibility to address climate change. And we are a city that takes responsibility for the past. We acknowledge the historical inequities that have been created through racism and will work as a community to undo these harms. The third way to get there, and most importantly, is we must recognize that we're all in this together. We are in this together. 
We must all work together, and I think we all have some work to do in this area. All too often in this age of social media and anonymous commenting, when people experience adversity and disagreement, they today follow the path of cynicism and re least resistance. And to echo Michelle Obama's words, they go low. Let's shake off that negativity and distrust. If we're going to accomplish great things, we have to act like great people. We have to trust each other, are well-intentioned. We have to believe in one another. We have to acknowledge each other's integrity, even when we disagree. And we should be vigilant not to let those few loud negative voices distract us, cloud our focus, or corrupt our vision. We must work together. And that starts with me. I'm here in front of you because you've given me an opportunity to lead this city, to follow my heart, my integrity, and make the right decisions based on the best of my knowledge and my ability. And I expect you to hold me to that. It starts with me and must continue with you. I will work hard to meet your expectations, but our success requires all of us. Success requires my friends on the Board of Alders and the Board of Education to work collaboratively with me as I will with you. Success requires that we not allow small disagreements, which we may have from time to time, drown out the larger goals. Together, we can accomplish our shared goals. I have also served on the Board of Alders, and I know you don't have an easy job. New Haven's success depends on us working together. Success requires a robust partnership with our state delegation and statewide partners, who I know understand that Connecticut can prosper only if it invests in cities like New Haven. I know you haven't always felt valued. You are crucial to this city's success, and I applaud you for the work that you've done over many years to improve this city, and I look forward to working with you, our partners at the state. <laughs> success requires our neighbors, neighbors in surrounding towns to not just work here, dine here, or see a show here, but to view yourselves as a part of the New Haven community to share that pride and responsibility, to recognize that New Haven provides to the, what New Haven provides to those struggling with substance abuse, what New Haven provides in the number of existing affordable housing units, provides for our homeless, and more and more. And you need to do more in your town and provide more resources to us so that we can all share in these responsibilities. <laughs> Success requires a, a positive and strong partnership with Yale University and Yale University Hospital. And it requires both the university and the hospital to think deeply about what it means to be a nonprofit, what it means to be a member of the New Haven community, and commit to doing your part. Our challenges are your challenges. Our home is your home. And success requires the rest of us. To be involved, be focused, be patient. Be patient with the time it takes to get things done. I understand the transition team uh, is going to submit their report soon, and they have a 100-day plan. Now I have 99 days to implement it, so please be patient. <laughs> Success requires all of us. New Haven has such potential, and that's not just political rhetoric. You all wouldn't be here if you didn't believe in our potential. We are at a defining moment in our city's history. To address our deep challenges, we must grow as a city. Yes, in population, but more importantly, grow as a people, so that we have the collective wherewithal to work together and accomplish what so many think we can't, to ensure that New Haven becomes a place where everyone has the opportunity to thrive. And as I look out uh, at, my, at my two daughters, uh, Natalie's and my two daughters, and my parents, uh, I, I deeply want them to thrive, them to be successful in their lives. And I know my parents deeply want me to be successful in my life. And that feeling is not unique. We all feel that for our families, and our families feel that for us. And I think it's critical that we acknowledge that no matter what you look like, where you come from, what your economic status is, there are people that love you and that you love. And we should connect as a community through our love of each other. Because we have 
the capability to do so much in this city. And I look forward to working with you as a team to accomplish so many challenges and to address these challenges and make our city in, in, increase the ability of our city to address the problems and the challenges of so many people. And I look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you so much and onward. Thank you, Mayor Elliker, and congratulations. At this time, we invite Rabbi Carl Astor and Iman Mustafa Tunahan Sengel to the podium to deliver the benediction. We ask everyone to please rise. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Peace be upon you all. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mustafa Şengül, and I am the Imam representing the Turkish American Muslim community in our great city. It is an honor for me and my community to be here today, recognizing this wonderful group of public servants. Building a community is not possible by simply fixing our evils. We must also give the next generation the tools and resources to succeed. It is only possible by educating our youth. With these words, before I start my prayer, I would like to congratulate and thank our city's leaders for their past and future successes. Dear Allah, thank you for enriching our city with people from different races, nationalities, ethnicities, orientations, languages, cultures, and religions. Dear Allah, guide us to talk, act, and believe that we are one. We are one people and one city under you. Dear Allah, guide our mayor, board of elders, and board of education to serve our city. Dear Allah, guide us to take care of our needy and give us the heart to uplift everyone onto a level playing field. Dear Allah, bless our city with productivity good health and jobs so we can take care of our families and those we love. Dear Allah, help us over this term and many more to learn to live with our means. Guide us to become conflict mitigators and good will nurturers. Protect our police and firemen committed to our safety and well-being. Dear Allah, help us Think, speak, act, act peacefully every moment of the day. Dear Allah, give us your infinite wisdom and give us the courage to do the right thing and help us to learn to respect our differences and accept the uniqueness of us all. Dear Allah, guide our city and its leaders this term and into the future. Amen. Thank you all very much. First, I just want to say I'm one of the newest members of this community, having moved here less than two years ago. And um, just about every day, I, I, I'm thankful for the warmth, the welcome that I've received in this community. What a wonderful treasure it's been for me, including my new friend, Mustafa, younger than my own son. <laughs> In the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter 29, we read, Be'en chazon yifara'am v'shomer Torah ashrehu. Means, without vision, the people perish. Happy is the one who honors teachings. I think every civic leader ought to bring this quotation to work with him or her every day and be informed by it. Because leadership is an, an awesome responsibility, and it's not for everyone. 
It requires both wisdom and patience, a thick skin and a thin ego, compassion and passion, commitment and chazon, vision. What is vision, chazon? It's most often that quality that is attributed to the prophets. It means insight, foresight, pr prophetic empathy. Being a good leader requires so much more than just balancing the budget or administering the government. The questions that our new leaders need to be asking at this moment is, what do I have as a vision for this city? What would be the best for the people who live here, all the people? How can I best serve these people who have chosen me to serve them? Some of you have been here before. Some of you are brand new to this. Um, what I've heard tonight is so encouraging. It's a perfect time for a new beginning. I wish you well, all of you, Mayor Elliker, Board of Elders, Honorable Michael Smart. I wish you success and many wonderful accomplishments. May God's blessings be upon you as you assume this awesome task. There's one prayer that we say at the end of our synagogue services, and I'll end with it. Our God and God of our ancestors, we ask your blessings for our country, for our state, city, and government, for its leaders and advisors, for all who exercise just and rightful authority. May they administer all affairs of state fairly, that peace and security, happiness and prosperity, justice and freedom may ever for abide in our midst. May citizens of all races and creeds forge a common bond in true harmony to banish hatred and bigotry and to safeguard the ideals and the free institutions that are the pride and glory of our nation. Thank you so much. Amen.